In the heart of a timeless village cradled by the great river, life flowed as predictable as the seasons. Simple folk, their roots anchored in fertile soil and palms calloused by fishing lines, danced to the rhythm of sunrise and harvest. Among them, Yusuf, a young fisherman with a twinkle in his eye and a knack for netting the river's bounty. But as the first blush of dawn kissed the water one fateful morning, something stirred beneath the surface, a ripple beyond the familiar, hinting at a tale woven from secrets and consequences. This, dear friends, is not just a story of nets and monsters, but a journey into the depths of understanding, where curiosity whispers in the reeds and wisdom roars from the river's mouth. Prepare to hold your breath as we plunge into the legend of Yusuf, the day the catch became a reckoning, and a village teetered on the brink of friendship or extinction. So gather close, let the firelight dance in your eyes, and we'll begin. But before we dive into the depths, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more thrilling stories. You won't want to miss what's lurking beneath the surface. As the sun yawned awake, painting the sky in fiery hues, Yusuf pushed his canoe into the gentle embrace of the great river. His paddle sliced through the glassy surface, leaving behind a V-shaped wake that shimmered like scattered jewels. The air hummed with the dawn chorus, a symphony of crickets and birdsong as the village stirred to life. But for Yusuf, there was only the whisper of water against his boat, and the promise of a full net hanging heavy in the morning air. Suddenly a tremor, subtle as a butterfly's wing, ran through the water. Yusuf, with the intuition honed by years on the river, froze, his ears straining for any telltale sound. Then, there it was. A ripple, wider than any he'd seen before emanating from beneath the gnarled branches of a towering sycamore. Curiosity, that eternal itch, snagged at him. Cautiously, he steered his canoe closer, heart thudding a counterpoint to the river's rhythm. Peeking under the sycamore's canopy, Yusuf's breath hitched. Nestled amongst the water lilies was a creature unlike any he'd ever encountered. It was vaguely hippo-like, but its skin shimmered with an impossible emerald hue, and its eyes, wide and liquid amber, stared back at him with an uncanny intelligence. Fear, a cold fist, clenched around Yusuf's stomach, but it was quickly pushed aside by an overwhelming, irresistible curiosity. He reached out, a trembling hand hovering over the creature's rough emerald hide. The creature flinched, then, to Yusuf's utter astonishment, nuzzled his palm. Hesitantly, he stroked its skin, the scales surprisingly warm and smooth beneath his fingertips. In that moment, a wordless connection sparked between them, a sense of shared wonder that momentarily eclipsed his fear. But the spell was broken abruptly as the creature, startled by a sudden noise, slipped back into the murky depths. Driven by a primal urge, Yusuf reacted instinctively. He snatched his fishing net, a weapon transformed by desperation, and with a swift, practiced throw, he snagged the emerald creature before it could vanish. A primal cry, both joyous and horrified, tore from his throat as he hauled his unexpected catch aboard. The great river, once his lullaby, now gurgled with unspoken warnings, and Yusuf knew with a sickening certainty that he had crossed a line he could never uncross. With a triumphant yet heavy heart, Yusuf paddled back to the village, the captured creature writhing and whimpering in the bottom of his canoe. News of his extraordinary catch spread like wildfire, drawing excited villagers to the riverbank. Gasps and awestruck whispers filled the air as Yusuf presented his emerald prize. The creature, unlike anything they'd ever seen, resembled a miniature hippopotamus, yet its shimmering scales glinted like polished gems and its large, intelligent eyes held a depth that captivated the crowd. The chief, a wizened man with a crown of salt and pepper hair stepped forward, his face creased with concern. He had heard whispers of strange creatures lurking in the river's depths, but this was his first encounter with one. He examined the creature cautiously, his gaze meeting the pleading eyes of the captive. A tremor of unease ran through him, a sense of foreboding that gnawed at the edges of his excitement. Suddenly the ground trembled, not with the gentle sway of the earth, but with a deep, primal thrum that pulsed through the very marrow of their bones. The villagers gasped, 
clutching at each other as the air grew thick with an oppressive feeling. Then from the churning waters of the great river rose a sight that stole the breath from their lungs. Two monstrous creatures, larger than any beast they had ever imagined, lumbered ashore. Their obsidian scales glinted in the sun and their eyes, burning with an otherworldly fire, swept over the terrified villagers. Smaller creatures, similar to the one Yusuf had captured, followed in their wake, their guttural roars echoing through the air. Panic seized the crowd. Children clung to their mothers. Men grabbed whatever implements they could find, and the once jubilant atmosphere dissolved into a cacophony of screams and desperate prayers. Yusuf, his heart pounding against his ribs, realized with horrifying clarity the consequences of his actions. He had not just caught a strange creature, he had unknowingly invited wrath upon his entire village. The lead creature, its voice a deep rumble that sent shivers down spines, turned its fiery gaze towards Yusuf. In that moment, the young fisherman understood. These were not beasts, but intelligent beings, and the small one he had captured, its eyes filled with pleading and fear, must have been this monster's child. Shame and remorse washed over him, replacing his earlier pride with a crushing weight of guilt. The chief, recognizing the danger his village was in, stepped forward with surprising courage. Please, he pleaded, his voice trembling but resolute. We meant no harm. We did not know your child was among us. Take me if you must, but spare my people. Silence gripped the village, thicker than the dust swirling in the wake of the monster's arrival. The lead creature, its obsidian scales catching the midday sun like shattered mirrors, loomed over the kneeling chief. Its massive jaws, lined with gleaming fangs, hovered a hair's breadth from the chief's wrinkled face. The air crackled with unspoken tension, every villager holding their breath as they awaited the monster's verdict. Then a sound. Not a deafening roar, not a terrifying growl, but something softer, almost hesitant. It rumbled deep in the monstrous throat, a guttural vibration that resonated through the bones of those gathered. Some villagers flinched, but others, including Yusuf, leaned forward, straining to understand the alien language. It was Lagaros, the lead monster, who spoke first. His voice, while unfamiliar, held a surpassing depth of emotion, sorrow, anger, and a flicker of understanding that surprised Yusuf to his core. You took our child, the monster rumbled, the ground trembling with each word. You disrupted the harmony of the river, the delicate balance woven between worlds. His words echoed the guilt gnawing at Yusuf's heart. He understood now the connection he had felt with the emerald creature wasn't just his own curiosity, but a shared kinship, a fragile bridge between their two worlds. And he, in his ignorance, had shattered it. Yusuf fell to his knees before Lagaros, tears prickling his eyes. Great Lagaros, he choked out, his voice barely a whisper. I did not understand before, but now I see. Please forgive my terrible deed. I will do anything to make amends. Lagaro studied him for a long moment, the fire in his eyes flickering with uncertainty. Could this small, fragile creature truly grasp the gravity of his transgression? Could he offer anything in return for the violation of their trust? Then, surprisingly, the corner of Lagaros's mouth twitched, almost a smile. A bridge, you say? He boomed a hint of amusement in his voice. Perhaps you can rebuild the one you broke. Teach your people to understand our world, just as we must learn to understand yours. A wave of relief washed over Yusuf, followed by a surge of determination. He had been given a chance, a fragile path towards redemption. He vowed to be worthy of this second chance, to become the bridge he spoke of the one who would lead his village into a future of understanding and coexistence with the creatures of the Great River. With the embers of the conflict still smoldering, a pact was forged under the watchful gaze of the Great River. The villagers, led by Yusuf, pledged to learn the ways of the river creatures, respecting their territory and honoring the delicate balance. The monsters, in turn, promised to protect the village from external threats, 
their fearsome presence a formidable shield against any who dared disturb their newfound harmony. Yusuf, once a simple fisherman, became a translator of worlds. He spent his days venturing into the shimmering depths of the river, learning their language, their customs, and their fears. He discovered a hidden civilization beneath the water's surface, a network of intricate coral cities teeming with life. He learned of their ancient history, their deep connection to the river, and the pain inflicted by Yusuf's unwitting trespass. He returned to the village, his eyes alight with newfound understanding. He shared stories of the underwater world, not just of monsters, but of families, communities, and a culture as rich and varied as their own. He dispelled fear with knowledge, replacing suspicion with wonder. Slowly, the villagers began to see the river creatures not as threats, but as neighbors, a part of the intricate tapestry of life woven into the fabric of their world. The story of Yusuf and the Great River serves as a powerful testament to the transformative power of understanding. It teaches us that beneath the surface of our differences, we share a common thread, a shared humanity that binds us together. It reminds us that true peace can only be found through empathy, through stepping beyond our own fears and prejudices to reach out to the other and building bridges of understanding. One story, one encounter at a time. Thank you for joining us on this unforgettable voyage. We hope you enjoyed the tale as much as we enjoyed sharing it with you. Stay tuned for more epic stories and exciting adventures. Until then, happy sailing.